With PlayStation's Spectral Super Resolution, also known as PSSR, Sony has joined the machine-learned image reconstruction race started by NVIDIA nearly six years ago. I am super excited to see this tech expanding, and I have also been eager to see how PSSR compares and contrasts to the most popular image reconstruction techniques, FSR and DLSS. Since we previewed Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart on PlayStation 5 Pro, we can now see how it stacks up against the various image quality treatments on the PC. And that's all this video is about today, how PSSR fares against its counterparts. How does PSSR currently improve on FSR in its most recent version? How does it compare and contrast next to DLSS? We'll get into all that and more, but before I do, I think it's good to describe the limits of my testing here. On PC, to keep things most similar, I'm utilizing the PS5 performance mode settings I derived over a year ago. This is not the best the game can look necessarily, but it'll be most similar to the PS5 Pro's output, for the most part. As I described in my review video back then, the settings are not a perfect match for PS5 as we cannot be as granular on PC as we would like necessarily. Dynamic resolution works differently for example, and the shadows and level of detail will not line up perfectly. So some things might look better on PC at times and other things might look better on PS5 at times. Just keep that in mind if you see some differences there. Another important thing to mention is that usually in a DF video looking at image quality, I would turn off motion blur as motion blur gets in the way of actually seeing differences at times in image quality between techniques. Unfortunately, the PS5 version of Ratchet & Clank doesn't allow motion blur to be turned off completely, as you can see here, where even with it disabled in the menu, the character moving here shows off a motion blur effect. I've matched that on PC, but because motion blur is getting in the way, my comparisons will not be as rigorous as they usually are. The second to last thing to mention is that PS5 Pro uses dynamic resolution scaling, and you can't really match that on PC as PC DRS works differently, and well, it's hard to match something that's constantly changing. So I elected to do two things. When comparing to FSR 3.1, as I will do, I'm looking at FSR 3.1 in its quality mode, which is 1440p internally at 4K. That will be typically a little bit lower res than what PS5 Pro is rendering internally at that moment. When I compare separately to DLSS, I'm doing pixel counts for each PS5 Pro recording I compare against, and I'm changing the internal resolution of DLSS to statically match that of PSSR using a program called DLSS Tweaks so that the comparison is a little bit more accurate there. Lastly, it is important to mention that we're looking just at one game here, Ratchet & Clank. The behavior of image reconstruction techniques can change in different games. So what is going to be shown here with regards to PSSR, for example, will not necessarily apply to all games with PSSR. We are just getting to know this technique at the moment so it is perhaps a little bit too early to make overarching conclusions about it. Still, with that out of the way, let us get into the comparison. My first port of call is, of course, to compare to FSR, as FSR's issues are known, and they are basically found in every game with FSR. So I want to see, at least in this title, if and how PSSR can fix it. This is the most relevant comparison, I think, for players on console, as PSSR is typically going to replace FSR in games for those people that have a PS5 Pro. The first thing I want to look at is Disocclusion Fizzle. Even with motion blur getting in the way, I think it's easy to see Disocclusion Fizzle in Ratchet and Clank while using FSR. Moving objects like Ratchet here, and the areas directly in front of him or next to him, fizzle in motion as new areas are revealed with each twist of his arms and body. In aggregate, it just makes it look like FSR is failing to anti-alias edges in a good way while things move. Thankfully, like DLSS or XESS, PSSR does not suffer from this issue in this title. In full speed motion side-by-sides, I think this lack of fizzling on the PSSR side here on the left is pretty obvious. It just looks more stable and natural and less aliased with less artifacts surrounding Ratchet as he's moving around. Slow down, we can see the same thing where even motion blur being on and matched on PC really can't hide that FSR fizzle on the right here. If we pause, we can see just how much better PSSR is in image quality here. Look at the edges of Clank, Ratchet's head, or the areas surrounding them in the FSR side of the view here. They're aliased, fuzzy, and with a kind of ringed sharpen look at times. 
while PSSR is softer, but it has much better anti-aliasing and none of the disocclusion fizzle artifacts. To me, this is a huge difference, as disocclusion fizzle, as I have always called it, is one of FSR's biggest issues across titles, and PSSR in this title solves it. It looks better, and the difference will perhaps be even more interesting to investigate in other titles, as they will not necessarily have as high internal resolutions as this one has, and FSR fares worse when internal resolutions are lower. Another FSR problem across games is with particles. When picking up this gun with FSR on, note how the particles have this wispy ghosty look as they show up. This is found nearly across every game with FSR, and this one is no exception even using the latest version of the scaler. In comparison, PSSR resolves the particles in a way that actually respects the original artwork. There's none of the ghosted wispy look that shows up, and it looks like the art essentially should. This applies to all particle effects in the game as far as I can tell, including confetti. With FSR 3.1, those small bits of confetti which presumably lack good motion vectors resolve in a way that is less than flattering, where they lack good anti-aliasing, and they phase in and out of existence as they are moving, as they are not stably reconstructed over time. With PSSR, it comparatively does a lot better at reconstructing the particles as they move, giving them a coherent shape that stays consistent as the particle is moving. Since the particles are not disappearing and wispy, it looks like there are actually a lot more of them in the air here with the PSSR view. Even though the actual amount of confetti in the air here is same in both versions of the game. It is just that FSR cannot reconstruct them well. Another area where you can see this with is with hologram signs. FSR has trouble with these in the game for the similar reasons that it has issues with particles. Transparent things don't tend to have good motion vectors, so holograms look lower res than the opaque geometry, and they're not well anti-aliased. PSSR, in comparison, does a lot better job here, applying anti-aliasing to that hologram, and it attempts to reconstruct its resolution. It's not perfect, of course, with PSSR, but I would say the hologram looks a lot better on the left than it does look on the right. Things lacking good motion vectors is always an issue with FSR, and it applies to other areas in Ratchet and Clank, like this grass here. For some reason, perhaps due to motion vectors being wrong, FSR thinks the grass is moving when it really is not, so it starts blurring the grass heavily in a specific direction, making it almost look like the pixels of the grass are flowing water. Machine learned upscalers tend to discriminate better here and PSSR tries to clamp down that issue. It's still not perfect on the PSSR side, I would argue, but it does manage to keep the grass from looking as odd as it does with FSR, where it barely looks like grass anymore. And in fairness to PSSR, no image reconstruction technology can avoid this issue completely here, as it appears to be an art asset issue in this game. In side-by-sides with the other scalers, I would say PSSR is right up there with DLSS in how much it clamps down on the issue in this scene here. The last area where FSR has specific problems in Ratchet and Clank is how it resolves bright surfaces. If you see the sun glinting off something in this game, it often becomes unstable and flickers a bit with FSR like these buildings at a distance here. The area of the geometry where the sun's reflection is showing pulsates, and this is an area where PSSR manages to do a better job than FSR, where it doesn't reproduce that flicker on the bright edges as we can see in the FSR image. So in general, as this example shows, I think PSSR tends to avoid the significant image quality issues that FSR has in this title, and that bodes well for other titles. But this does not mean that it does not have issues of its own. Here going over to a comparison with DLSS now at the same internal resolution, I want to point out a few image quality aspects that separate PSSR and DLSS. The first thing about PSSR that is negative, I would say, is that if you look at any given area of the image, you can always see there's kind of a moving fizzle there. Look at this tree up close, or those leaves behind them flush against the building, or the lines on the building itself, and what you kind of see there is a crawling fizzle in the PSSR view. I'm not exactly sure what it is maybe some sort of meta instability in the image, but it is found across every single comparison I've made so far of PSSR and the other scalers. 
It's a fizzling that is not found there when compared to DLSS, nor is it found when you compare against FSR for that matter. So PSSR can be better than FSR in its problematic areas, but this problem area is specific to PSSR here, and it often will show less overall image stability than the other scalers, especially next to DLSS, which will tend to resolve very stable lines, especially when the camera is still. That cannot be said of PSSR. When put next to DLSS, another thing that I notice is how moving geometry has a higher level of temporal stability with DLSS. These buildings here that bob up and down, with PSSR on the left, you can see how the edges shimmer, showing active aliasing. Whereas with DLSS on the right, those same buildings have reduced flicker in comparison. I would not say DLSS completely eliminates it, but there is a noticeable difference here in stability in favor of DLSS. This also bears out when you look at more rapidly moving objects, where PSSR will do a better job than FSR as I showed off earlier, but versus DLSS, it does not anti-alias as well. For example, moving geometry like Ratchet's Wrench. With motion blur getting in the way, it is honestly a bit hard to see, but if you find those frames where motion blur is not on them, you can see that PSSR tends to resolve more aliased objects in movement than DLSS. You would see this better if there was no motion blur here, of course. This applies as well to those things that are recently disoccluded, like the wire on the ground here. Aliasing sticks around longer over time there in the PSSR view than it does in the DLSS view. So generally, PSSR in the same case-by-case -case comparisons is less stable than DLSS whether you're looking at things that are moving or if the camera is just sitting still. Another macro difference you can see between DLSS and PSSR is in image softness. Let's start with surface texture detail here. DLSS no longer has an inherent post-process sharpener as I'm showing in the middle here. Instead, it's added on a per game basis, like I've turned up all the way on the right. And even with post-process sharpening off as we see in the middle, I think we can see how the resolve of PSSR is still noticeably softer. For the detail like the wood grain on the boxes, I think you could see that as a detriment. But I still would say I vastly prefer the image on the far left here to the image on the far right, which has game sharpening maxed out and looks really strange. Another thing to notice as a part of this softness is you can see differences in edge gradients, such as on the rounded tower here. Yes, the inner surface detail versus DLSS is lower, but if you look at some of the rounded edges, you can see that there's a better edge gradient there on PSSR, even though it is less stable. The resolve of a reconstruction technique is a partially subjective question, as different widths of resolve, so to speak, can have pluses or minuses for anti-aliasing. But in general, it's easy to see across multiple comparisons how PSSR is softer than DLSS and will often be less stable, even if some of the edges have a better gradient. One less subjective thing to be talked about is ray tracing and the strange smears or ghosting that PSSR resolves. Now, Oliver talked about this in his video, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit more here as well, compared against the other techniques. Compared against DLSS, for example, on Clank as he moves on Ratchet's back, I want you to mainly look at the reflections on Clank's face and body there. You can see how the reflections in the PSSR view lag behind Clank's movement and leave these kind of trails that have this flowing look about them. It is admittedly a little strange and unexpected to see, and I'm having a hard time saying it's PSSR's fault here, actually, because there's a lot of things that can contribute to ray tracing denoising. And there's some behaviors that I don't really expect to see. For example, if you speed up the video playback while looking at this golden metal here, you can see how the reflections kind of move in a strange way with PSSR that just doesn't happen with DLSS. The way ray tracing meshes with image reconstruction can be complex, and the noise pattern that is input that is given to the reconstruction can have a huge impact on the output image quality. And we know for certain that Insomniac has tweaked the sampling pattern to mesh better with PSSR. And maybe a byproduct of that change is this trails issue we are seeing here.
It's really hard to know though, of course, without looking under the hood. Still, I would say even if the reflections in movement, as I've shown, have some negative aspects, it has led to a better reflection stability. This is especially true when compared against DLSS, where the checkerboard input in this title on the high setting as matching PS5 doesn't actually work with DLSS and it spits out the same checkerboard pattern as an output, which leaves reflections on perfectly mirror surfaces like this one looking chunky and aliased. That doesn't look right. PSSR here, with its changed sample input, is resolving checkerboarding merged correctly, so then it looks high res. And compared to the other scalers too, we can see that work paying off where, with the other image reconstruction techniques, the resolution of the ray tracing looks high enough, but it's not necessarily as temporally stable as PSSR. So maybe that ghosting we're seeing earlier has some positive aspects where things are more stable over time when the camera is still. But really beyond those differences I've pointed out, I think I still need more time with PSSR in this title and in other titles to say more. My first look at it here in Ratchet and Clank reminds me a lot of my first look at XESS when I looked at it back in the day in Tomb Raider. Here I can see all the areas very clearly where it can be vastly superior to FSR, and that is the technology it's going to be replacing in a lot of games, and I would say I prefer the visual output, usually, of PSSR. If it gets rid of FSR-like issues in other games like it does in this one, then I think people will see great image quality enhancement over base PS5 versions of the game, even at similar input resolutions. Though I'm saying that based on a very specific case here. The resolution is rather high here internally, and maybe the differences will be different at lower input resolutions. The issues that I saw with stability though are perhaps something to watch out for in the future to see if that shows up in cross-title comparisons, if it's not just an issue with this game here or this engine here. One thing that I also really want to see is games running at much lower resolutions internally. It is fun to see how DLSS or PSSR can compare at high resolutions like this, but it actually starts to get interesting to compare image reconstruction techniques when the input resolution is around quarter res of the output res, like 1080p going up to 4K. Comparing things like 1728p going up to 4K is actually not too interesting. With that being said, expect more from me in the future covering PSSR, and until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, ring that little bell to get instant notifications when videos are posted. Support us on Patreon, comment below, and as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen!